Hey guys, it's Joe with PocketNow.com. Yesterday we showed you a video on how you can go through and unlock, root, and super user your Nexus 4. We did that for a reason. Because today we're going to show off Cyanogen Mod 10.1 running on the Nexus 4. Let's go take a look. So here we've got the Google Nexus 4, of course made by LG. If you missed our full review, I will have a link to that at the end of this video. You don't want to miss that. If you missed our video on how to root and unlock and install SuperSue, you'll want to make sure you watch that video too. I'll have a link to it at the end of this one as well. It's kind of a prerequisite to this video. So this video, what is this? This is Cyanogen Mod 10.1. Let's go ahead and if I can pull down my notification shade here, take a look at this in the settings and about phone. Got my cyanogen mod updates and statistics, yada yada yada, version 4.2.1, and you can see that this is 10 2012 1203 nightly. So this is the December 3rd nightly rather than the December 4th. I think there were some problems with the download of that version. So we're definitely running cyanogen mod 10.1. Point one. The point one just means that this is Android 4.2.1. Got it? Okay, good deal. So, now that we have this 10.1, it is a nightly. Nightlies are experimental. They are not stable. There are things that are not implemented. There are things that are broken, so keep that in mind. Generally speaking, Cyanogen Mod ROMs are fast. Sometimes they're faster than normal ROMs. We went ahead and ran some benchmarks. Let me pull that up. I took some screenshots for you. And in Geekbench, scored 1823. Just a smidgen slower than running the stock ROM. Take a look over here at Quadrant. Can't read it from that angle. 4269, which again is a little bit slower than the stock ROM. For a nightly version of Cyanogen Mod, that's not to be unexpected. It's going to get faster, it's going to get better, and the drop-in speed between what we had seen and what Cyanogen Mod 10 is really is negligible, and you're not going to feel it in everyday practical use. I mean, it's still very, very fast. So what are some things that you can expect with Cyanogen Mod? First of all, notice I have gone ahead and uh, modified my dock down here, my hot seat as it were, and I've added a couple extra spaces for icons, so now I can have seven or more icons down there. It's great, it's customizable, that's what we like. Next, we've got our power widget, which I love. This thing is great, it lets you do all kinds of stuff right there in the power widget. This, of course, is running the trebuchet launcher, so let's jump right into that. We'll go into settings. First of all, we've still got the stock Android Jelly Bean 4.2 quick settings up here, the quick toggle screen, not the one from previous versions of Cyanogen Mod, at least not yet. They're probably going to extend what they have here rather than go back in and, uh, and reinvent the wheel with theirs, but that's just a guess on my side. So we have this new section called Launcher, and if I can uh, tap it instead of going into Google Now, that would be helpful. In here we can modify stuff on our home screen, change our grid size, the number of home screens. I've changed from the default of five to three because that's all I use and that helps speed up my device. I can set the default screen. I want to change that to two because that's the middle one. I can change my vertical padding, horizontal padding. Do I want a persistent search bar? Yes or no. I like it if you don't take it off. You can do that. It's awesome. You can resize any widget, including widgets that are kind of old and don't know how to be resized. Now you can because the launcher knows how to do that for you. If you know what things are based on their icon and you don't need their label, you can hide their icon label. It's super awesome. This is stuff you have seen before. Wallpaper stuff, yada yada yada, show page indicator, fade it, dock divider, all that fun stuff. Drawer, same basic stuff. Dock, this is where I was telling you how many dock icons I could have. Let's go back to five. Go from there. And general. We can auto-rotate the screen to whatever orientation we're in. I like that feature, so let's go ahead and do it. And this, of course, is Trebuchet 0.2. Moving down in here, themeability. One of the major, most awesome, cool things that you can do with Cyanogen Mod is theme it. It comes pre-installed with one theme, the stock theme. 
So there you go. If you want to add more, you can add more. You've got buttons up here to be able to quick launch into that. You can grab stuff from the Play Store, make it look all kinds of cool. Coming into system, we can change the status bar. Up here I have shown the AM PM over on my clock as a small. I've got some other options in there, normal and none, none being the default. Battery status style, percentage, uh, I believe icon is the default. You can put a percentage in there, a circle, a circle with percentage, which is what I've done right there. Or you can just hide it if you don't really care. Or if you've got a widget on your home screen telling you what it is, go ahead and hide it. So we'll leave it where it is. The uh, signal strength style is an icon for me. This is for your phone. You can make that text or hidden if you want. Notification counts. Really cool. If you have notifications up here, how many Gmails, how many missed calls, whatever, it will show you how many there are so you don't have to go into the app or pull down the notification shade to see. Really uh, kind of a, a quick, easy way to find out, hey, you've missed 10 calls. Might be important. Power menu. When you hit the power button, you can do all kinds of stuff. Show the reboot menu, take a screenshot so you don't have to hit volume down and power at the same time. Expanded desktop, I haven't played with that one yet. If you wanna tell us what it is, go over to pocketnow.com and leave us a comment, just a, a brief description of what the expanded desktop is and how you use it. Profile switcher, now this is not multi-user profiles. This is, I'm at home, I'm at work, I'm in the car you can pre-configure profiles and use NFC to toggle between them and you can get to that by hitting the power button if you don't want to go to an NFC solution. You can switch it into airplane mode quickly that way and go into the sound panel as well. Lots of cool stuff. Notification light. I'll breeze over this. The notification light down here is not that big but it is very convenient and with CyanogenMod 10.1 you can customize it. So I have turned on my customized values. It will blink blue for missed call. It will blink white for voicemail. It will blink green for email coming through the email app or red coming through the Gmail app and orange if I get a message through Google Talk. So let's go ahead and see how this works. You tap on it, you can select what family of colors you want and then whichever color you want in here. You can change the speed of the flash. I like normal just because it looks better to me and you can even test it. So let's go ahead and test. That will bring up this dialogue. You turn off your screen and if you notice down here now you've got this really cool blinky light. It doesn't blink faster as far as how many times per minute it blinks. Uh, that setting on speed is how many times or how fast you want the the light to light up and go away. Now that was kind of interesting. You saw it was red and I clearly have it selected as orange in here. I don't know why that's the case. Probably because this is a nightly and they are still working on things. But again, still red. But before I put this on camera, it was working and so your mileage may vary. Okay, go ahead and try it. I like it. I think it's awesome. Moving right along. Let's get in. There's so much stuff in this. Uh, a lot of stuff you have already seen here. We've gone through all the system. Profiles, this is where you set up and configure your profiles. If you don't want to use them, just turn it off. Uh, if you do want to use them, here's some pre-configured ones. You can change your settings on each one of those over there. You can also go in and set up your, uh, your NFC somewhere in all of this. Come back here and I'm getting close to the bottom now. Developer options and performance are both hidden. So you have to use the, uh, the multi-tap on your build number. You tap that 10 times, it says, hey, now you're a developer, great. Once you do that, both of these will show up. In developer options, I haven't seen much different there, but you do now have this performance. Performance is just like you'd expect. You've got you know, proceed with caution warnings. Processor, you can set it to the maximum speed, uh, 1512 as the maximum and the minimum speed I want that to be down here at 384 for some reason that didn't stick even though I told it to set at boot I like it to run as slow as it can when I don't need it to do anything to save on battery life uh, like I said it didn't stick I don't know why again it's a nightly maybe that's the explanation you can also change the governor in there IO scheduler I've never done anything with that memory management ZRAM and allow purging of assets. This essentially compresses your RAM. It takes more processing power to do, but you have more 
effective RAM that you can use. So it's like, you know, instead of two gig, now you've got 2.5, but it takes a little bit more time to get into it. If you use a lot of RAM intensive apps, that's a good thing to do. Test it, see if it works. All of the benchmarks that I did were without doing any customizations to these, so it was stock. And then allow purging of assets. You can just you know, let the OS kick stuff out when they're not needed anymore, free up some of that RAM. 16-bit transparency, if you want to lose a little bit of uh, quality in your transparent images and whatnot, you can toggle that and get some extra speed. I don't like the way it looks, so I leave it off. And surface improvement, the default is to fix color banding. I've turned that to fix color banding effects again after I did the uh, the change uh, or I'm sorry I did this after I did the the benchmarks so the benchmarks are with the defaults so that essentially is it there's probably other stuff hidden in here that I haven't shown you but we can only cover so much in a video there is one very important thing that I need to mention and that is if you are going to be running cyanogen mod 10 my preferred way to flash this is using Clockwork, or is that right? <laughs> Using ROM Manager and Clockwork Mod Recovery together. Unfortunately, the Google Apps, the GAPS package that you download with Cyanogen Mod 10 Nightly, is version 4.1 and it will break. That's kind of why it took us an extra day to get this video out. It will break, you will be in a boot loop, it will cause all kinds of headaches. Uh, wow. I've got a link over at pocketnow.com. I'll have a link to the article where you can find that link where you can get a 4.2 Google Apps package that will actually work. And as you can see here, it's, it's working just fine. So make sure you head over to pocketnow.com so you can get that. CyanEngine Mod 10.1 nightly. I, I love CyanEngine Mod. I love having it on my Nexus device, even though it is a Nexus device because, well, that's what Nexus devices are really meant to do, to let you do all kinds of customization. I love it. If you like it, let us know. If you don't like it, let us know. If you've got another ROM that you're running on your Nexus 4, I want to know about that. Head to pocketnow.com and leave that comment down beneath the article so I can go and take a look at it and maybe even do a video about it. For Pocket Now, showing off CM 10.1 on the Nexus 4, I'm Joe Levi. Thanks for watching.